Hi everyone, it's really quite cold out here, but I thought it'd be a nice chance just to wander around the garden in between the showers and have a little look at all the fruit trees growing and my hardy trees that are left outside all winter. Just to remember what we've got to look forward to next year. Many of my fruit trees haven't even fruited yet, so I'm looking forward to hoping that 2024 will be their year. Let's have a little wander around. First of all, we have all of the high bush blueberries. They are all growing in pots and they're all lost lots of their beautiful red autumn foliage. We've got lots of flower buds coming here. So that's a lot to look forward to. Um, got some little other acid lovers, the lingonberries, and these are the pink blueberries. They haven't lost their foliage yet. They're also known as pink lemonade, lovely blueberries. And the last um, acid lovers here are the more recent ones. They are little tiny bilberries also known as European blueberries, and they're also going to be very exciting for next year. Over here we have some pineapple guavas that I recently finally repotted. They were so pot-bound, at least one of them was, and so I think they're very happy in their new spot. And I'm going to be putting them elsewhere soon in somewhere sort of really sheltered because they didn't like the really cold temperatures we had last winter. And here, this yellow tree is a beautiful red devil apple tree. So it's just going to lose all its foliage and then hopefully we get lots of flowers. So lots of little fruiting spurs coming up everywhere. I did give it a nice summer prune to encourage it to fruit again next year. So lots of fruiting spurs everywhere. Very exciting. Over here, this is a flowering currant we have, which is growing very tall and needs a prune soon. And next to this flowering currant, we have an Asian pear tree which is still quite little and it flowered last year but we didn't get any fruit from it it was quite early on I mean I only just planted it last year but it does have pollination partners because it needs that it's got some European pears over there that duo pear tree there with it's got conference pears and concord pears and those are both supposed to be pollination partners for this Asian pear tree so I'm hoping they'll flower at the same time next year which they should and then we can get some lovely Asian pears as well. Because of course they cross-pollinated each other, so we had some nice European pears this year. It's really fun. The guy next to the Asian pear is an apple tree. It's a very old apple tree. It was here when we moved in. I've done lots of pruning to it just to keep it neat. It's a tumble-down apple tree, so it's lying on its side. And it's taken a bit of, we've tried to get some support. But <laughs> it's quite fun the way it grows over this walkway here. And it's really pretty to see little apples tumbling down as you walk through this pathway. This mess over here is a beautiful Japanese quince. You can see it's already got lots and lots of flower buds on the branches because it flowers really early. And then it actually has some really lovely yellow fruits and they were known as Baltic lemons because they were used to make lots of home remedies, like things you'd, you'd drink during the winter months to keep colds and coughs away. They're so full of all kinds of health benefits and vitamin C in particular. Next to it is this European pear tree, which is getting very tall and will need a bit of winter pruning before it starts shooting out leaves later on. And next to it, we have a very lovely tree that I'd so love. It is an apple tree. It is an orange pippin apple tree. Cox orange pippin is called. It has the most beautiful apple. And I'm really hoping we'll get lots next year because there are lots of little fruiting spurs everywhere. So I am looking forward to that so much. It's taken quite a while to really start fruiting. And so I'm hoping next year will be the year. We actually have some fissilis around here. There's some extra ones and they're so late. But there are beautiful flowers there and it'll be nice to see if they actually manage to get some fruit that will ripen. They are very cold sensitive. So if we get some frost, that'll be the end of them. But I have some in inside, keeping them safe. The ones indoors are fruiting constantly now. And I want to keep them safe for next year because when you have them going, then they fruit so much early in the year and you can have fruit from May onwards. And they keep on going and they really bush out a lot so they're great plants to grow in this corner i have my japanese persimmon fuyu he's got some beautiful autumnal color now and i'm hoping that he'll fruit for the first time next year he's getting very tall 
And last year he didn't actually have this autumn color. He just sort of was green for a long time and then he dropped all his leaves. Whereas this year he's really changed color. It looks really nice. And next to him we have some of my favorites. These are Saskatoon bushes, also known as Amelanchia alnifolia. And they are just delicious blueberries that are so easy to grow. They have no specific soil requirements. You just grow everywhere and they have produced an abundance of really good blueberries. And here we got three little American pawpaws. I planted three in a hole <laughs> all together. They need cross pollination. And so it made sense for me just to grow them all together at the time anyhow. That was made sense to me. And they all have flower buds on them. I'm so excited because I did have a flower this year but it had no one to cross pollinate with so it just died but this year but now we can see for next spring there are some buds I just can't seem to focus on but they are there and it's looking very exciting I haven't shown these but I have quite a few of these wonderful honeyberry bushes now I really like them because they fruit super early in the year so it's at a time where you don't get much else in the garden get to eat some of these. They can be a bit tart. They said if you leave them hanging for as long as possible they'll get sweeter. But when I did that the birds ate most of them and then when I covered them with a mesh, sort of mesh netting, then they got mold. So yeah I just leave them and then eat what I can. And don't mind if they're a bit tart because I do actually like tart fruit. But lovely honeyberries and they're super hardy too, super good. These, these are all red raspberries. still a few fruit here actually. These ones are this year's growth and they'll fruit again next summer, sort of from May onwards, and then I'll chop them right down and by then all the new growth will come up and fruit in the summer. So you get lots and lots of fruit all summer long. But right down here I want to show you, this is my kiwi berry isai. It's a real tangle here. But I'm going to leave him as he is. I might see if I can prune him later on but he's nice and hardy and he's fine now and then if we if he starts budding up in the spring I'll have to cover him up because that's the thing that's when they're really in danger of being damaged it's when they start shooting out their buds when they start budding if they do so too early then you can have lots of flower buds out and then those all get hit by a frost and that will kill them so it's really important to keep them covered and protected if we get late frosts but that's not for several months now, so I can just leave it as it is. It's nice and a hardy plant. Absolutely fine. It had some beautiful fruit this year too. This is what I'm looking forward to extra much. He is a dwarf green gauge plum tree. I put a little cage around him so he wouldn't get hit by balls or mowed by the mow lawn mower. But I'm hoping that he might get some fruit next year for the first time. He does need a pollination partner and I have another plum tree elsewhere. This lovely Victoria plum is a great pollination partner for the green gauge. So hopefully we'll get both and I can see that I gave it a nice summer prune. You have to prune these kind of trees in the summer. And we've got lots of little fruit spurs on them. So it's looking really good. And next to him we've got some more honey berries here. These guys here. And next to that we have a mulberry bush. Now the mulberry bush flowers and fruits on old as well as new wood so I could give him a really good chop and make sure he doesn't break in the wind and then he'll still be fine to fruit and flower next year. It's a nice black mulberry this one. It's so lovely to see the promise of spring on all these bare stems. This is a white currant and he's already got lots of lovely buds everywhere. We also have some pink currants and some red currants and some black currants in the garden. So I do love currants. I'm hoping for a good harvest of them next year. I'll be doing a little prune later on in the winter and also pruning my gooseberry. These bare prickly stems are just a mass of green and red gooseberries. And so I have to give them a really good prune this year. They fruit really well on two and three year old wood. So I need to give them a prune and make sure there's enough airflow. And of course, right next to all these lovely gooseberries, we have tons and tons of golden raspberries, which I need to look at. They're going to become bare sticks soon, and I'll have to 
prune them down, and then they should branch out next year. All of this year's growth will branch out next year and fruit again, after which time I'll chop them right down, and then we'll get some new growth coming out and have some more fruit. So it's a continuous, wonderful supply. It's wonderful to think that they all just started from two little plants we got from a friend. So done really well. They really spread fast. But I hope you've enjoyed this. There's just a few things we have to look forward to. There's other parts of the garden I haven't been able to show you, but lots and lots and lots to look forward to. So I'm happy for the garden to take a little break, a little rest and get rejuvenated for the year ahead. And I'm going to go and collect lots of leaves now and get them all packed around the garden, mulching everything, keeping it all warm and also giving some to my worms too. They love it. And I'll see you next time. Until then, happy gardening.